All right, everyone, I'm going to give it just about 30 seconds for all of our participants to come in. Thank you so much for joining us. I see the participants tab is climbing with everyone joining us. So thank you so, so much. I know everyone's just coming off of their information session and they learned a lot from the last last session. So we'll give it another minute for everyone to take a mental break. <laughs> All right, this is excellent. We have well over 100 people here, so I really appreciate everyone coming in here for our undergraduate student research panel. But um, so thank you everyone for showing up. It's 515. We still have some daylight out today. First of all, congratulations on your acceptance to Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute. You should feel so proud for everything that you've accomplished. This is our accepted student celebration today. It's February 21st, and I believe it is the earliest accepted student celebration we've ever had in terms of where it falls in the year. So thank you so much for applying and getting in and considering us here at Rensselaer. And we really want to show you everything that we have to offer here on campus. This is the undergraduate research session uh, that you have signed up for. We are going to hear from three amazing Rensselaer students, how they came to Rensselaer, their experiences, and then the research that they're focusing on here on campus. We'll have a moderated chat box. So if you do have any questions, feel free to type them in. We'll be answering them um, through the chat box as well as virtually uh, or excuse me verbally where possible um, but without further ado we have Kaylin Edwards we have Rochelle um, Caper and Kara Bartlett um, here to give us their uh, presentations we'll go one at a time so feel free to um, you know type in uh, pay attention and we'll have questions at the end thanks everyone and um, to start it all off we will have Kaylin taking over first all right, perfect. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, congratulations on your acceptance to RPI. Very exciting. Um, hopefully, we'll be seeing a bunch of you on campus uh, coming this fall. Uh, but I'm just going to talk a bit about today, about my background, uh, what I've been up to here on campus, and specifically the research that I've been involved in both on and off campus. Uh, so I am a senior here at RPI, uh, majoring in biology, and I'm also pursuing a minor in psychology. I grew up in southern New Jersey, but I do live down in Southern Pines, North Carolina now. Uh, in terms of what I'm involved in here on campus, I am an admissions ambassador, so that's the main reason I'm with all of you here today. Uh, obviously, I've done some undergrad research, another reason why I'm you know, in this session with all of you. Um, I've also I've been involved in Greek life. I'm in Alpha Phi, which is a sorority here on campus. And that's honestly a decision that, you know, I never really expected I would make before coming to college. Greek life was never a big criteria on my list, um, but I'm so glad that I decided to jump in to something out of my comfort zone. I've had the opportunity to practice my leadership skills, um, really make a lot of great friends and also just have awesome academic and social support throughout my four years. So I definitely encourage all of you to look into Greek life if you are remotely interested. Uh, otherwise, I've been involved in the Women's Mentoring Program. So all of our first year females have the opportunity to be matched up with a current female on our campus. Uh, so any of you females out there, uh, Definitely keep an eye out for, for that. If you do choose to come to Rensselaer, you'll have the, the opportunity to kind of have a buddy your first couple of weeks on campus, show you the ropes and, you know, where your classes are and just be a good source of, you know, kind of advice from a female perspective within the STEM field. And finally, I've played a handful of intramural sports, both through my sorority and also just with different groups of friends on campus. Uh, probably the highlight was I played in and real ice hockey uh, the spring semester of my sophomore year, and it was super fun. We got to play up on our Division One ice in the Houston Fieldhouse. Um, we only won a single game all season, but I still have all my teeth and no major trips to the hospital or anything like that. So it was a fun time for sure. So a bit more uh, kind of just about my major and why I decided to come to RPI in the first place. Uh, so essentially, I do have a twin sister that has cerebral palsy. So um, basically the portion of her brain that controls fine motor skills and specifically your ability to walk uh, didn't fully develop before my sister Jillian and I were born. And so that was always kind of just an interesting 
I guess, fact about me that always piqued my interest in biology and also, you know, the fact that we're twins, right? So the, all the, the genetics and kind of that whole side of the field was always really relatable and interesting um, and a personable thing that I was able to connect with. And I realized that my senior year of high school when I took AP Bio, um, and then from there, you know, I, I knew I was interested in a, some sort of future in math and science, the STEM field. Uh, I took a look at campus and I saw our Center for Biotechnology and Interdisciplinary Studies, otherwise known as CBIS, which is uh, the picture over here on the right hand side of the, the slide. That is our, our biotech building. And this building is just designated for research on our campus. And you know, there's no classes held in there or anything like that. So it definitely piqued my interest when I saw, you know, not only how focused the student body was on, on research and the faculty as well, um, but also that we had facilities like this to kind of make things, um, you know, happen and be able to have the resources we need to, to be able to do some pretty awesome research. Uh, and finally, my financial aid package worked really well for me and my family. Um, so that was another big reason why I chose Rensselaer and everything just kind of seemed to to come together and it seems like it has for a lot of you here today. So that's awesome. So more specifically about my research, uh, both on and off campus. So in the spring of 2020, I worked with uh, the COFIS lab uh, and that was located in our biotech building, the one you just saw in the, the past slide. Uh, and basically I worked with osteoarthritis patient cells and we had found, um, extracted an, a certain enzyme out of some pig and shark cartilage that had known to be, was known to be a really great anti-inflammatory. So we were trying to take that and grow it up in different bacteria cells and kind of um, place that into osteoarthritis patient cells and see, um, you know, how that helps from an inflammation standpoint. And, uh, you know, I, I had really zero research experience up until this point. And it was a great opportunity to, you know, be able to get my feet underneath me a little bit and work on a project that was related to the my, you know, what I was interested in in biology, but also it was a meaningful project, right? It was my opportunity to kind of drift away from the traditional lab classes that were, you know, kind of followed by a textbook or a pre-lab and a post-lab. Uh, it was really cool to be able to to work on something so meaningful and something that could definitely impact someone's life. Um, and in terms of how I kind of discovered this project in this lab on campus is I just went to our um, Center for Bi Biotechnology's uh, website. I can put that down in the chat if anyone is interested in it. But basically, it highlights a lot of our research that's happening within the biomedical engineering department, the bio department, really anything within that building. And it has all the faculty members as well on there that are involved in the research. And it just gives you a little blurb of their, um, you know, kind of what their lab is up to, what their projects entail. Uh, I also talked to my academic advisor, you know, and mentioned that I was looking to get involved in some research and, you know, express to her some of my interests. And she was able to kind of guide me a little bit to certain labs on campus that she thought would be a good fit for me. And then from there, I just, you know, sent these faculty members and these professors emails and introduced myself, attached my resume, um, and just asked if they'd be willing to have a conversation about what they do in the lab. You know, are they looking for any undergrads for the semester? Um, so really just taking the initiative and starting that conversation is, you know, what you have to do. And I think, you know, just kind of staying persistent and on top of things. And there is so much research happening on campus that I'm confident you'll be able to find something you're passionate about. Uh, and finally, I did have the opportunity to work with Epigenos Biosciences. They are a startup biotech company uh, down in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. There's a picture of the lab there on the slide. Uh, but this research was um, really neat and definitely something that I had never done before. Uh, so it was really based in a lot of stem cell biology, which I had some experience with at RPI just from different lab classes I had taken and, you know, some of the research I was doing with Dr. Kofis. Um, but specifically, I was working with Friedrich's ataxia patient cells, and we were basically um, trying to uh, epigenetically modify the, the DNA of these patients, essentially the, you know, the one gene that causes Friedrich's ataxia, 
is on chromosome 9 and it's turned off in the disease state and we were basically trying to turn it back on uh definitely sounds a lot easier said than done but it was awesome to be able to work on uh, a research project like this and spend so much time you know at the bench over over the summer um, and kind of see not only what research looks like um, you know outside of an academic environment and more so for you know a biotech company but also kind of i gained an appreciation for what it's like to run uh, a biotech company and what the industry looks like and kind of what those day-to-day -day processes are so uh, definitely a really great experience that I'm uh, grateful for. Uh, next up, I will pass things off to Rochelle. Hi guys, um, I hope you can hear me. My name is Rochelle. I'm currently a sophomore studying biological neuroscience and psychological science. Um, it's a dual degree. Um, and um, congrats on being accepted to RPI. So a little bit about what I'm involved in on campus. I'm on the RPI club ski team. I'm part of the food recovery network. Um, I'm also in Greek life in the same sorority as Caitlin, actually. I'm an admissions ambassador. That's why I'm here today. And I'm involved in undergraduate research. And here are just a few pictures of me um, you know, in Troy and being on the ski team. So the first. Um, research group I got involved in was my freshman year at uh, Cogworks Laboratory. And the way it happened was super easy. So the cognitive science department every week holds um, meetings where they have, you know, professors from other schools present or uh, PhD students present. And they usually do a panel where they showcase some of their research groups. And afterwards, you can ask questions or talk to the professors directly. And I went up to a professor and asked if they had room and he um, just like showed me the lab and I guess the rest is history. Um, and what I really like about this lab is just the, I guess, dynamic where undergrads are able to work directly with grad students and PhD students. Um, and I came in not knowing anything about uh, the prog programming language R. Um, and then they assigned me a task to analyze behavioral patterns of eye movement patterns and keyboard um, movements of subjects playing Tetris and other computational tasks. And this is really to understand the interaction of um, cognition, perception, and action. So, and I was able to, you know, bring subjects in and um, follow the guidelines of an IRB, which is an institutional review board. And then I, I learned how to um, use the programming language R to analyze it. So as an undergrad, as a freshman, they were able to assign me all these tasks and it was just awesome. And then uh, later on in the year, I, um, I was talking to my psychological science advisor and I learned that she ran this group called Alzheimer's Prevention Research Group. And she told me to just sit in on a meeting and they asked if I um, you know, wanted to join and it was really that easy um, in the cognitive science department do that. And I was able to um, actually design um, an imaginary stress test. So it asks about like, you know, your stress, if you had these events or not to imagine um, if that happened to you and to assess the re reliability of past ones. And then um, with other, you know, people in the bio uh, biological sciences departments, we were trying to design an experiment to test salivary cortisol levels. So that's, if you ever heard of it, cortisol is a stress hormone uh, and we would be using saliva to test that. And then um, this semester, one uh, master's student who I worked on in the Alzheimer's Pre Prevention Research Group, she asked me to hop on her thesis project and that's to see um, social stressor stressors and their um, impact on declarative memory. And so for me, that's independent study and I'm actually able to receive credit for it. And what's cool about research is it can be for credit, for volunteer, and sometimes even paid research. And just want to highlight how easy it was for me to get involved. It was as simple as going up to a prof professor. And like Kaylin said, you can, you know, especially virtual times, you can just email and usually they're welcome, they're, they'll point you in the right direction if they don't have any availability. So yeah, just take initiative um, and 
get involved as soon as you can. It's a great way to network and meet people um, and put something on your resume and, you know, learn something interesting. So I'll pass this along to Kara. Thank you guys for listening. Hey, everybody. Uh, so my name is Kara. Um, I am a biochemistry and biophysics student. I'm in I'm currently working on finishing up my bachelor's and I'm also working on working towards earning credits for my master's degree. I'm part of the co-terminal program. Um, some of my activities here on campus, I'm involved in rental lyrics acapella. Um, I am also involved in Greek life. Uh, my sorority is a social and professional sorority. Um, so we have a strong focus on the professional side of things as well as uh, forming a great uh, social network. Um, and I've also been involved in the pep band and the Society of Women Engineers in the past, but I, uh, unfortunately, due to time constraints, I'm no longer able to be involved in them. Um, so a little bit about why I chose RPI. Um, I really like the student community. The variety of extracurriculars is really great. We have over 200 student clubs and organizations, so there's something to get involved with for pretty much everybody. Um, I really like the on-campus research opportunities. Uh, the location is really great. Um, I know a lot of people, especially like some of my friends from New York City, feel like this is kind of out in the middle of nowhere, but I'm from rural New Hampshire, so this is like the big city for me. Um, it's really a nice place to be able to like walk around, walk down into town, go to the farmer's market, great stuff like that. Um, and then I, I really appreciate that RPI's financial aid package can be continued if you uh, stay for your master's degree through the co-terminal degree. I knew coming in as a freshman that I wanted to do my co-terminal master's here at RPI. So uh, being able to apply my uh, undergrad scholarship to that degree is a really great opportunity. Uh, so biochemistry and biophysics, it's a very interdisciplinary degree. Uh, it gives you a really strong foundation in chemistry and physics and biology during your first couple years. Then you get a lot of really great fle flexibility from your electives. You can pick um, what kinds of classes that you want to take. You get a lot of free electives. You get a lot of uh, major classes that are instead of taking X, Y, and Z class, you have to do maybe three classes from a list of six, something like that. So it's a really great way to really tailor your degree to what you want to be studying. And you get a great combination of both lab and computational experience. Um, so, you, so you get to work with cool modeling softwares like the one that made this image on the right here. Um, and so for my undergraduate research, I was involved in the Wellbeing Toolbox project. So you are not limited to where you undergraduate, when, where you do research um, by your major. I am biochemistry, but I actually did research in the cognitive science department, and there's lots of really cool research going on in pretty much every department here at RPI. So like you're not limited by what you're studying. If you're interested in mechanical engineering and you're a cognitive science major or whatever you're interested in, you can get involved. Um, so what I did for my undergraduate research was part of the well-being toolbox project. Um, which was focused on learning about what kind of mental health techniques work well for undergraduates and particularly college freshmen as they are adapting to college life in their first semester. Um, so my part of the project was analyzing survey results from students who took uh, one of their one of the two uh, professors well-being classes during their first semester. And then, as I mentioned, I'm doing the co-terminal master's degree, and part of that is a professional project. Um, so for that, for me, is an extra research project that for me is going to take about a year. Um, this is part of my graduate research, but we do have lots of undergraduates in our lab. So this is just another idea of research you could be involved in. Um, so I'm working in the Hurley lab, and I'm working on studying circadian biology. And my project is fluorescently tagging a protein so that we can watch its movements in a cell through a day-night cycle. Um, and this is a really great way to get exposed to a lot of different new techniques, things like CRISPR, which is a super cutting edge technology. Um, uh, it was just, the Nobel Prize was just one for it last year. So it's really cool to be able to work with this really advanced technology. Um, and I see Nathan, you asked, when did I, when do you decide to go to co-term? Um, I knew I wanted to do it from my freshman year, but you have to apply by the, um, the last time that you can apply is during your first semester of your senior year. So if you're not sure if you want to take some time to think about it, you have three years before you have to decide. So it's totally fine if you're not sure about it when you're coming in. Um, and so then we have our social media slides. Um, follow us on social media so you can get more information about the school. And yeah, I think we're doing Q&A now.
Yes, thank you so much, Kara. And I'd like to invite everyone else just back on the screen here. Thank you for highlighting the, a day in the life and how you chose research and RPI here. Um, the first question we have, um, just how undergraduate research has been affected by COVID, uh, kind of the opportunities, if any of you, you know, have friends, um, you know, just give us a, a broad, uh, look of that and I guess we can you know anyone who wants to answer can answer um. so for me uh, unfortunately I have not been able to continue my work with the COVIS lab just because so much of my day-to-day -day research is so hands-on and I have to physically be in the lab to work with the cells um, but I know some of our more computational based research um, even maybe you know stuff that Kara and Rochelle mentioned uh, is able to be done remotely, um, but I am, you know, nowhere near as good of a coder as some of my friends, and I try and kind of stay clear of that side of things, but I know a lot of um, research that's based in computer programming is also happening as well, um, but that's just personally, you know, how I've been affected by it. Yeah, unfortunately, undergraduates are not allowed to be in the lab right now. We can only have graduate students to keep, like, the density requirements low. Um, but hopefully by the end of the summer and maybe next semester, next spring, you um, undergrads can be back in the lab. So for me, um, most of my stuff was computational, um, especially for Cogworks Laboratory. So um, the Tetra system, uh, one of our PhD students designed it so that we could just send the applications to people. Um, and then coding, I was able to continue. Um, online um, and then with working on other projects that was you know like surveys and most of it didn't really change for me um because it wasn't like a typical laboratory experience gotcha thank you so much um and how much time does research take up in your weekly schedules great question uh so that's a really good question uh, and definitely it was a big concern for me, you know, when I decided to jump into research, you know, would I be able to balance my typical course load and also, you know, have the time I wanted to dedicate to research. Um, that honestly is up to you and, you know, kind of what you want to gain out of the experience. Um, I ended up doing research for credit hours. So I signed up for two credit hours of undergrad research. So I had to, at minimum, spend two hours a week in the lab. Um, and typically on Wednesdays, that's a really common day to have different lab courses or even have a more of an open schedule and not have as many classes. So I picked Wednesdays and I would just go into the lab for two to three hours in the morning. Um, and, you know, what I did in the lab is what I did. Um, and I just had to write up kind of a, I guess, quick report at the end of the semester just to send into my um, lab advisor just to kind of, you know, show that I learned something and had contributed to the lab. Um, but yeah, that was not a huge time commitment. Um, but if you are, you know, super passionate about a specific type of research, you can, like I said, definitely, um, do more credit hours of research. I just felt like that was what I could personally handle, um, for that given semester. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I was also concerned, uh, especially as I decided to jump into, you know, like two right away, pretty much. Um, but my, you know, the professors I was working with um, and the PhD students, they just, you know, if they like assigned me a project they wanted, they would tell me a deadline. Um, and basically I was able to uh, kind of dedicate my own hours. Usually there was like a weekly lab meeting, but other than that, it was more of uh, where I made out of it. Um, and right now, since I am doing research for credit, it would be two hours per week. That's great. Thank you so much. Kind of a similar question, um, just in terms of balancing research and, you know, four to five classes a week, how do you all balance your schedules? Great question. I would say definitely think about like how much you can like reasonably handle and it might vary a bit from semester to semester, um, depending on like what classes you're taking, if you're taking a particularly hard class. Um, but doing like 18 credits with maybe four, four, four credit classes and then two credits of research is usually very doable. Um, if you start wanting to do more research, since you can take it for credit, you might do it instead of a free elective or something. Um, I'm currently, currently only taking um, 12 credits of classes and then I'm doing three credits of research. 
So it's kind of because it can count towards credits, you can definitely balance it so that you can get the most out of it that you want. Yeah, I completely agree with what Kara said. And I can see the chat box here with, you know, some concerns which are very valid and were definitely on my mind as well. Um, I personally didn't start doing research until my junior year just because, you know, I felt like I wanted to get my feet underneath me academically a little bit. You know, I joined Greek Life. I, you know, interviewed to be an admissions ambassador. So I was giving campus tours and, you know, I kind of jumped into some extracurriculars before looking into research. Um, and I think everyone's path is different, but I felt like, you know, once I got to my junior year, I had a lot of awesome foundational lab skills under my belt. I was taking some more uh, free electives and didn't have as many lab courses that I had to take anymore and had a little bit of more uh, flexibility in my schedule. Um, but it's really, you know, completely up to you and your, your major and, you know, kind of what you have ahead of you. And your academic advisor is a really great resource to kind of talk through this with. Um, I definitely, you know, talked to my advisor and she, you know, would say, oh, you know, you're taking physics two and organic chemistry this semester. I don't really think you should, you know, try and add on some research on top of that. You know, that would probably be too much. Um, but just in general, I see, you know, a question about what classes would look like. Um, typically, you have the same classes on Mondays and Thursdays and then Tuesdays, Fridays. So, you know, you usually have like two to three lectures per day. And then Wednesdays, like I said, are kind of designated for lab courses, research, um, maybe some smaller group recitation blocks, um, that kind of thing. But Rochelle, I'll pass things over to you if you wanted to add anything to that. Yeah, I agree. And um, it doesn't have to be like a forever commitment. So if you need to take a break one semester, like you decide to start early, but you need to take a break, um, that's all things you can communicate with the people that you're doing research with and they'll be glad to they'll probably hold a spot for you. Um, I'll try to work it out or maybe they can give you less hours to work on um and if you you know you find like other opportunities you can you know like move on as if it was like another job to move on to so i think that's just important to know it does not have to be set in stone um, but there are very useful skills that you can take on even to the workplace um, i know for me like learning r um, and just like how to generally write the institutional review boards that's going to be very useful for me um, Programming is a very useful skill to have, have. and like in the psych department, um, to be able to like, work with others and write those institutional reports. That's great. Thank you so much. We have a couple questions. Just, um, you know, this presentation was focused more on the biological sciences, but we certainly have research opportunities for every major here on campus. And I know that we're kind of, you know, go at cross pollinating and going between disciplines. So um, do, do any of you have friends, you know, other research projects that you know are going on on campus? And, you know, are they, you know, studying one thing and then researching another thing? Just any kind of interesting stories that you have about about that? Yeah, well, Kara, if you want to take yeah. this one. Um, do you know of any students who come in already having researched a specific topic and then, you know, presenting it to a professor or is it more the professors kind of leading the projects and, you know, creating the topics? I think it depends on each group. Um, I know in the Alzheimer's prevention group, uh, it was a mix of both. Um, some topics the professor would think of and she would ask if anyone wanted to work on it, but she, there would also be kind of like an open open forum. Um, and she would be like, oh, is there anything you guys would want to work on? And that, that's, that happened to a lot of people. Um, somebody was trying to figure out um, the like effects of smell and sleep correlation. And that was just a topic they came up with and she ran with it. So it very much depends. Awesome. This is great. Oh, sorry. Keep, keep going. You know, just kind of the value of learning, you know, really foundational kind of techniques. Uh, I'm, I really think that, 
doing some research on campus made me a lot more marketable to employers and, you know, really kind of set me apart from other applicants and allowed me to, you know, work for Epigenos down in, in North Carolina for the summer and have that internship. Um, and I think it also really challenged me to kind of think about the science in a different way. You know, it, when you're taking a lab course, it's a lot more structured where uh, you definitely have to think outside of the box a little bit more when you're in a research lab and troubleshoot. And I think, you know, that really helps to improve my critical thinking skills as well. So there's a lot of awesome benefits that come from research in general. Or, um, you know, females at RPI studying science in the STEM field. Yeah, I completely agree with what Kara said. Uh, and something I always like to, to kind of just mention is that, you know, RPI, one of my favorite things about just being a student here is how supportive everyone is of each other. You know, even though we're females on campus and there are more males compared to us, you know, I've never once felt undermined or, you know, kind of looked down on because I was a female. Everyone really wants to hear what you have to say. And, you know, you know that your peers around you are really smart and you know have a lot of different experiences to bring to the table um and also you know it's a great time to kind of i guess get practice with this if that makes sense right so the stem field is going to be traditionally a little bit more male dominated so it's a good time to kind of figure that out now in college when it's a little bit more you know i guess acceptable to make mistakes and kind of you know figure out what works for you what doesn't in terms of just working with all different types of people from different backgrounds. So I think it's a great time to kind of um, get those experiences. I completely agree. And I, I, I like that, you know, we have all these organizations in place, um, you know, sororities, women mentoring program, and even um, like the Society of Women Engineers, which is great. I mean, you don't have to be a woman to be part of it, but typically they are. And it's just a great networking um, for the women um, in STEM just to get to know each other and meet with employers and you know you don't have like guys there typically so it's a great way to just get to know other girls that's 